In this video, we're going to talk about the rebuild curve command. Now, rebuilding is one of the most important things you're ever going to do as a NURBS modeler. It allows you to take the underlying detail of your curve or surface, if you're rebuilding surfaces, and adjust it in various ways depending on the situation. In most cases, you're going to use rebuild to kind of equalize your detail, to smooth things out, get everything nice and even across your surface, to create uniform spacing, which we'll talk about in, uh, in just a bit, as well as to clean up your parameterization. But Rebuild can do several other things as well. Let's take just a second and uh, look at rebuilding curves and uh, some of the situations in which you might want to rebuild. First off, let's create a curve. I have my CV curve tool, and I'll just click around, make a few points like so. Now, I'm going to uh, show a few things on this. Let's go to Display, uh, NURBS Components, and I'll just bring up this little menu so that I can, at will, uh, show CVs and edit points across the surface. The surface of the curve. <laughs> okay, so now from here, let's open up the Rebuild Curves menu. Now, I don't expect you, if you've never done any sort of NURBS modeling before in your life, to completely grasp the importance of rebuilding until you've modeled a little bit. So right now I'm going to focus primarily upon the rebuild tool as uh, kind of as it stands. Here's the tool, here's some of its options, here's what it can do. And then later on, as you get deeper and deeper into modeling, you'll, you'll come to understand more closely why you rebuild and under what circumstances will you choose which option. Now, under your rebuild curve options, you're going to notice uh, several rebuild types. The first and probably most commonly used among these is uniform. Uniform surfaces have uh, uniform parameterization, they, uh, being 0 to 1 or 0 to number of spans. The detail, as far as edit points are concerned, is evenly spaced out across the curve. They're one of the most common surfaces for creating NURBS models, uh, especially for entertainment, because they are, uh, they're clean, they're very easy to edit, easy to understand and read when you look at the surface. If you have all of the detail, uh, be it edit points, be it isoparms, all cleanly and evenly spaced across the surface, it'll be a lot easier for you as a modeler to understand what's going on, a lot easier for a texture artist to place textures upon the surface, a lot easier for an animator. So for all of these reasons and more, uh, rendering engine, uh, a lot of rendering engines appeal more and have, have an easier time handling uniform surfaces. Some of them don't even handle uh, non-uniform surfaces at all. So uh, uniform is definitely one of the most important build types you have. Let's talk about that first. When you rebuild a curve in a uniform manner, you can control the parameter range. Now, you guys should already know a bit about parameterization. Uh, in this case, it just refers to the numbers along the curve going from zero to a given number. You have two types of parameterization. You have uh, uniform and chord length. Now, uniform is what we've got in here by default. So I can open up my attribute editor, and I know i got a lot of things stacked up here. But you can see in the background, we have min and max values of 0 to 9, and we have 9 spans. So right now we have 0 to number of spans uh, parameterization on this curve by default. I can change that if I were to come in here and select a curve point along the curve, maybe a curve point over here, and let's detach the curve. And I'll move this new segment of curve out of the way. We'll delete our other two segments. Now, the parameterization on this curve is 3.546 to 8.338, and it has six spans. So the parameterization on this could be said to be chord length because it is, it's is—it's got arbitrary numbers. Now, uh, we know because of the history of the curve that that tells us where on the original curve we cut each end. But if a new modeler was coming in here, they'd have no idea where along the curve they were. Uniform is going to help clean that up when you change the parameter range. You don't have to do that. Uh, if you want, you can keep that parameterization if for any reason you want to, though given in most cases you won't want to do that. And uh, down from here, you have various parts of the curve that you can choose to keep or change. Uh, first off, we can keep the ends of the curve if we don't want those to change at all. In a lot of cases, you won't notice much of a change in the ends anyway, even if you don't switch this on. This is just kind of a check and balance. If you check this, it's going to make sure that the ends are kept in exactly the same position they were in to begin with. You can keep the tangents of the curve, which uh, is going to affect the next CV into the curve as well. Make sure that you keep that. So if you've got a nice tangency setup that you don't want to break, you can check this box and uh, you won't destroy that tangency. If you want, you can keep CVs, and this is very handy. This is something that we'll probably be using a great deal as we go into our NURBS modeling. This allows you to keep your CVs in the same place after you rebuild. So if you've been in here and you've been adjusting your curve and you've got this 
real precise system set up, and you don't want those CVs to move because you want, you know, if you have to go back in there and edit them again, you don't want them to fly around. You don't want them to go to another part of the model or anything like that. It's very handy to be able to check keep CVs. Notice that a lot of the other keeps switch off as soon as you do that. And then when you rebuild, all of your CVs will be in the exact same, uh, exact same location, uh, even though the underlying detail, the edit points, have all been cleaned up. You can also keep the number of spans of the curve. If, uh, in this case, we have six spans. If we want to keep it at six spans, we can check that. If you don't keep your number of spans, you can change the number of spans to any given number. So I could remove detail from this curve, because right now you can see we have six spans. I could set this down to three. And uh, let's go ahead and just finally click Apply after all of this talking. And it doesn't work if I don't select it in object mode. So let's click Apply. And boom. Notice the curve simplified quite a bit. The shape of it changed. I can hit undo and redo, and you can see what just happened here. I'll go ahead and hit the, the three key to smooth things out. But also notice we now have one, two, three spans. But notice most importantly, because we're using the rebuild type of uniform, that our spans are evenly spaced out along the curve. Now you might ask yourself immediately, if you're totally fresh to this, you're like, why is that so important? Let me show you. Let's say I take this curve and we duplicate it. And I grab both of these curves and create a loft in between the two. And notice we've got some isoparms that are a little bit closer to others. You know, nothing's really... There's not like a continuity of the surface, I guess you could say. It'd probably be one way to put it. Now let me go ahead and grab... I'll delete out this curve. We don't need it anymore. Let me grab this curve and we'll rebuild it again using uniform spacing. We'll duplicate again. Move up. Select our two curves and do the exact same thing. We'll loft once more. Now, even though our surface is simpler, notice that our isoparms are spaced out perfectly. And we don't even have to simplify if we don't want to. We could delete this out. Let's go ahead and uh, actually let's undo all the way back to before we did the rebuild. Let's leave our spans at 6. And we'll rebuild again. Notice how it evens out that detail. So now we duplicate. This is just a, more of a fair comparison because we'll have the same number of spans between the two. If you're wondering why I'm doing this. So now we have another copy wherein the detail has been evenly spaced out across the surface. The parameterization has been fixed. It's going to be a lot easier for a texture artist to handle this as well as for us later on because we have a cleaner idea of where all of the detail is being kept. Just a better surface overall. Now down from here you can change the degree of the curve if you should need to. Uh, of course you can have a, a linear curve, uh, a two degree curve, three degree, five or seven. In, I think, every single thing we're going to be doing as far as modeling is concerned, we're just going to be using cubic curves. They're the most widely supported curves, and uh, they're pretty much the standard for all NURBS models, so that's what we'll be using. Now, if you choose Keep Original, and let's see, if I were to undo way back to before we rebuilt, and let's get rid of all these surfaces, we can choose Keep Original and click Apply. And what this is going to do, among uh, other things, I mean, of course, it will give us our original curve, in case we still need it to make any changes later, but also we get a rebuild curve node where we can go in and change these options after the fact. So if we're looking at this curve, and let's say we go ahead and switch on edit points, and we won't really worry too much about CVs right now, you can see that we have our six spans, and they're now evenly spaced out across the curve, but uh, maybe we lost too much detail in the process, so we might want to bring in some more of that detail. We can increase the spans after the rebuild is complete, Keep the surface, or the, uh, the surface of the curve anyway, nice and uniform, and just build that up until we see the amount of detail we want it back. Now, I mean, if this were my curve, I'd say probably somewhere around, uh, let's see, maybe here would work just fine for what I have. Yeah, it's a little bit simplified, maybe not quite as flat here, but such an imperceptible difference, and uh, you get this nice uniform spacing across everything. So that's great. That's exactly what we're looking for. So if you want to experiment with the rebuild command, you can just, of course, keep original, bring up your rebuild curve node, and start jumping between all the various types. Now let's go back to our original curve, and I'll bring back up the rebuild options, like so. Now the other uh, forms we have, some of these you won't be using very much. Some of them you, you may not ever use at all. Uh, they're just they're there to perform a variety of functions on your curve should you need them. Uh, like I said earlier, uniform is probably the most widely used. I know when I'm rebuilding, 
I think 99.9997% of the time I'm using Uniform. Every now and then I have to reach over and do something else. Uh, occasionally, when you try to rebuild Uniform on a, a curve or surface, uh, something will be damaged, uh, like a, the rebuild might not function properly, so you may need to switch to another uh, type temporarily. For example, I have in the past rebuilt curves, and uh, when I do it in Uniform, sometimes something will mess up or the curve will deform a little too harshly. So you can rebuild sometimes in curvature, then rebuild in uniform, and everything's fine. So just a quick example. But let's talk about some of these other rebuild types. We have reduce. Now what this is going to do, uh, first off, you'll notice that it allows you to keep your parameter range. And then you have keep original, of course. Down here at the bottom, we suddenly get use tolerance, global or local. What reduce is going to do is remove uh, spans, or I'm um, sorry, edit points of your curve, and it's, uh, it's going to use the tolerance to control how it removes those. If it removes a sp uh, an edit point in this case, it's going to check all of the other edit points of the curve. If none of those edit points move as far as the given tolerance, then it'll go ahead and take out that edit point. If they will end up moving further, then it won't remove that. And you can use the global tolerance or a local tolerance. So let me go ahead. I'll ha I've keep original checked, and we'll click Apply. Now let's move our new curve out of the way. We'll show edit points on it. And uh, here's how this works. As I increase my tolerance, notice how I'm pulling out more of the edit points. And because there are already so few edit points on this curve, we don't get that many. In fact, it may be easier, just as an example, let's go ahead and bring up our window again. We'll start off with a uniform build, and we'll set our number of spans to something like 32 and apply. Let's move this curve up, and we'll delete its history. We'll show its edit points. So there's a lot of edit points on this new curve that I just created. Now let's switch over to Reduce and click Apply. And you can already see how it killed off a few of the, of the uh, original edit points. But as we increase the tolerance, go ahead and switch on edit points here. You notice with a tolerance of 0 0.001, nothing is really removed. And as the tolerance goes up, we start taking out those edit points. Other edit points are relocated all in an effort to try to uh, make sure that none of the remaining edit points move within the bounds of the tolerance, or beyond the bounds of the tolerance, I guess you should say. So the primary function of reduce is pretty much to simplify a curve within a given tolerance. That's the easiest way to look at it. So let's go ahead and delete these. We'll bring up our options again. From here, we have match knots. This is going to, going to allow you to match the parameter range, the uh, number of spans, and so forth, of, an, of a given curve. It will not match the shape. It's not what it's about. So, for example, if I were to create a new curve, which has two spans. Notice my original curve has six. I can select the curve to be rebuilt. I can select the curve that I'd like to match to. And then I have a, a variety of things I can choose here. I can alter the parameter range if I want to, or I can keep that the same. Uh, I can choose to keep the ends, uh, keep the tangents, or the CVs. Let's just go ahead and click Apply. And I did keep original, so let's go back and grab this new curve. And notice it now has six spans and zero to number of spans parameterization. So I have matched the knots of this existing curve, not in the shape. You've got to remember that. That's real easy. A lot of people who are just getting started uh, get those two confused. Now, why would you want to do this? If I were to grab this original curve, notice the original two-span version. And let me grab this curve, and let's go ahead and I'll go to Uniform. I'll match CVs and rebuild with zero to number of spans. That should keep us from changing the shape of the curve really very much at all. But it does keep those CVs in the same spot, which is all I was really hoping for. And I'll switch on Edit Points. Let's go ahead and take this other curve, and I'll pick it up and put it kind of above this other curve, like so. And let's create uh, a loft in between these two. Now, a loft may not be the, uh, the cleanest example of this. In fact, I'd have probably have to build up a, a severe curve network to really show this off. But when you start doing various modeling operations, especially things like bi-rails, which we'll be talking about if, if we haven't already, depending on the order you've watched these, uh, you're going to notice that it's going to be a lot more helpful if the curves have the same number of spans between one another before you create your, uh, your surface. So as you go from one curve to another to create a surface, it'll be a lot, a lot better for your surface. You have a cleaner surface, a better looking surface. If Maya can look and notice you have the same number of spans from one curve to the next between the, where it's going to make the new surface. So you can, of course, use match 
to simply match that up. So you wouldn't have to maybe grab this curve and go to the attribute editor and say, oh, this has got six spans. Well, let me grab this guy, and I'll go to uniform, and I'll set him to six spans. Of course, this is one option. You'll just probably find that it's faster to simply grab your curve, grab the curve you'd like to match to, switch to match knots, and click apply. And if we grab both of these curves and show edit points, you'll notice that it did the exact same operation. So match knots is going to give you nice uniform distribution. Okay? So down from here, we have uh, no multiple knots. The idea of this uh, command is simply to take out any multi knots you might have created. So uh, a really easy way to look at this would be maybe to grab a, a CV. We'll go to CV hardness. And let's see, would CV hardness work? Yeah, it'll work there. Just want to make sure I had two uh, CVs on either side of that. Let's go ahead and run that. So, of course, we now have a knot that has some multiplicity. Let's go ahead and move this up. I'll, uh, I'll leave that curve in place for now in case I want to use it on anything else later. But I will delete history on this curve. And you'll notice that if I were to come in here and grab edit points and use my uh, pick walk, notice that I get a little catch here. And I am hitting keys. I hit uh, right, right, right and then we jump away. So I have three edit points all stacked on top of one another. Now we've talked about uh, not multiplicity and how it allows you to create corners in your NURB surface, but uh, you're gonna find that uh, some rendering packages don't much care for multi-knots. Uh, in a lot of cases, you won't want a razor sharp edge. So while they are cool in certain examples, chances are great you won't be finding yourself using them very much. And if you happen to have some by mistake, you can take them right out with the no multiple knots uh, action under rebuild curve. So to switch on no, uh, no multiple knots, notice I can still change my parameter range if I want to. Click apply, and there you go. It has simply taken out that multi-knot. If I show edit points, boom, the multi-knot is gone. That's really all there is to it. And of course, it'll clean up your parameterization while it's there. Down from here, we have curvature. And what this is going to do is rebuild your curve based on the curvature it finds on your curve. And what I mean by that is it's going to add detail uh, where it finds high curvature, and it's going to remove detail wherever it finds more straight lines. So uh, let me go ahead, and you'll notice that positional tolerance pops up as soon as you select this, because you're going to use a varying degree of tolerance to control how many points are created. So let's go ahead and click Apply, and we'll show our edit points. You'll notice we have substantially more edit points than we had before, and notice their spacing. We have the kind of sparsely spaced here where the curve is relatively straight. And as we get around here to this tight corner, we end up with more edit points. And because I kept history, or uh, I told it to keep the original curve, I can come in here and adjust the tolerance. And the higher the tolerance, the fewer edit points we have over the, the total curve. The lower the tolerance, we get a lot more. And again, this is not something that I find myself using very often. Though occasionally when rebuilding a curve to uniform, if I get an error, I've more than once rebuilt it over to curvature, then rebuilt it to uniform, and everything was fine. So let's go back to our options. Now, uh, down from here, we have end conditions. All this is going to do is rebuild the end conditions of your curve, just the end, the tips. Now, you might have remembered something from early on, way back, uh, when we were talking about curve multiplicity. I mentioned that by default, uh, curves have not multiplicity of three at the ends and one at all internal uh, edit points, which is cool. And you can actually verify that just by looking at any given curve. Let me create a curve. Remember control vertices, CVs? We've been playing with these for a while. Remember how CVs never really touch the curve? You know, they're, they're used kind of like to influence the curve. Then why is it the CVs at the end do touch the curve? That's because they have multiple knots at the tip of the curve. You can actually switch that off. When you switch over to uh, end conditions, you'll notice that you have two options, no multiple knots or multiple knots. You can also adjust the parameter range if you want. So we'll leave that at zero to number of spans. So I can take this and switch it to no multiple knots, which remember, multiple knots is the default value for a curve. That's why this end CV runs right into the end of the curve. Let's go ahead and rebuild. And now look at this. If I go back to control vertices, Oh, wait, hang on. Let me make sure that actually caught. It didn't look like it did. Let's go back to edit curves, uh, rebuild curve. I love it when that happens. So end conditions, no multiple knots. Oh, I think I had the original curve selected. I'll bet I did. Let's click apply, and there we go. 
Now let's grab the control vertices on our curve. Sorry, that was my bad. I forgot we had keep originals on. So now check it out. We no longer have a CV that goes right to the end of the curve. We have this floating CV way out here in outer space. And it does, as you can see, influence the curve. And I actually kept originals on twice. So we'll grab this curve, and you guys never saw that. It was never there. Thank you for playing. Now, here we go. You see we can adjust the curve. And it's, it's interesting now, because we don't have that CV right at the end of the curve. You're going to find that altering curves in this way is a pain in the neck, because you actually have to pull on like two to three CVs just to get the look you want on the end. But this method can also come in kind of handy, especially if you're trying to create tangency between two curves. Let me demonstrate. So here's a curve. Let me create another curve, like so. And we'll kind of zoom in so you can see these a little better. Now, let's say, just for the sake of example, that I want to attach these two curves together, and I want nice, clean tangency in between the two. And there's a lot of different ways, of course, that I can do that. And you guys have seen a lot of those. I could attach and detach and a lot of things. But one of my options is to rebuild both of the curves such that end conditions are set to no multiple knots. And I'll switch off Keep Original just for this example. And we'll click Apply. And I'll minimize that. Now, if I go over here to Control Vertices, Notice that my CVs are now spaced out to everywhere. I mean, like the end CV of this curve is way out here in outer space. Now let's grab this curve, and I'm going to show CVs. You can see how all that's working. Now check this out. I can make these two curves line up and be tangent to one another just by snapping these CVs now that I've killed off my uh, end conditions. So we'll grab the first CV in this curve. I'm going to snap it, notice, to the third from the end CV. It's very important. So third from the end, like so. We'll grab the second CV and bring it to the second from the end CV. And the third CV will go to the last CV here. And look at this. If I were to deselect the two curves, and let's just grab this guy and we'll switch off his CVs for all fairness. Notice you don't even see the point where they're joined. You have perfect tangency in between the two curves. Very easy, just with a little bit of snapping. And all you had to do was switch off the multiple knots at the ends of the curves. When you're done, you can go back to end conditions and switch multiple knots back on. Click Apply. You'll notice nothing really happens to the curves, except that now if you come back in and grab control vertices, you have that good old happy CV right at the end of the curve, just like you remember it. Just like Mama used to make. So that's it. I mean, that is everything for rebuilding from one end to the other. Again, we've talked about a lot of different rebuild types, but uh, Uniform is probably the most frequently used that you're ever going to come across. And uh, that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.